Hello everyone, welcome to chapter 1.2, 8th grade math. We are talking about writing and solving multi-step equations. Make sure you copy this down, press pause so that you can get this written down. Also, please make sure you have this written down as well. Solving multi-step equations. To solve multi-step equations, use the inverse operations to isolate the variable. All right, here is our first question. Again, please do not be afraid of these questions. Just because you see the it, fractions, just make sure you just follow the same steps of PEMDAS, and then we can move forward. Remember last time we talked about splitting this equation in two. Remember, we want to get rid of anything that is next to a variable or isolate the variable, which means we want to get rid of addition, subtraction, multiplication, and or division, and we want to move it on this side. I did see a few mistakes uh, this past week, so just be careful about how you are moving things over to the other side. The best way I can explain it is to think of kind of like a seesaw, you know, a teeter-totter. Everything always needs to be equal on both sides. So if you have, if you move a bunch of stuff over here, there should be something over here to make sure it's equal to this side as well, okay? So you can't move everything on one side and leave something else. Uh, for example, th I saw a lot of students do this, and they would do minus 6, right? And you're moving it over here, and basically what would happen to that seesaw? Right, if you had a seesaw, you took that 6 that was over here, moved it over there, there's nothing here, right? So then this seesaw would be unbalanced, and there's nothing you can do, right? So you got to make sure it's always equal with each other. All right, let's see if we can solve question number one. So first thing we usually want to do is probably get rid of addition or subtraction problems. I see that I have addition problem here, so let's do the opposite of that. What's the opposite of adding 12? Well, that would be subtracting 12, right? Don't forget to cross it off. And whatever you do on one side, we're going to do on the other. So we're going to subtract, oops, we're going to subtract 12. Now remember, same sign or different signs? We know that this is a positive 6, so they are different signs. So we're going to subtract. What is 12 minus 6? I know the answer is 6. And my next question is, do I have more positives or do I have more negatives? If we're talking about a number line, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Here's negative 12. And if I move over 6 positive spaces, right? positive if that is this way I go 1 2 3 4 5 6 I end up at negative 6 so I know that my answer is going to be negative I, I know I have more negatives than I have positives okay let's rewrite the equation and finish it off so I have 5 over 7 P minus 2 over 7 P equals negative 6 okay well now I have to combine my fractions right because I have the same variable I'm allowed to do that so think of it this way you know I have a pineapple and a pineapple I can combine all the pineapples and see how many pineapples I have so let's check this out I have 5 over 7 P minus 2 over 7 P well all we're doing is subtraction so 5 minus 2 gives me 3 my denominator stays the same so I now have 3 over 7 P is equal to negative 6 all right, so now I just want to get rid of this 3 over 7. Well, I know I have an invisible operation here. What invisible operation do I have? I have multiplication. So what is the opposite of multiplication? Well, that would be division. So let's divide by 3 over 7. And whatever you do on one side, make sure you do it to the other. So divide by 3 over 7, cross it off. You're left over with P. And whatever you do on one side, do it to the other. So let's divide by 3 over 7. Well, let's remind ourselves, how do we divide fractions? Well, let's turn our whole number into a fraction. Then we have to, what, flip the second fraction. This is the second one. That's also called the reciprocal. So I have 7 over 3 turns the division into a multiplication. So I now have negative 6 over 1 divided by, or sorry, multiplied by 7 over 3. 
Well, I know I can simplify, so I'm going to simplify ahead of time right here. There's a number that can go into both 6 and 3. What number is that? Well, it's 3. So let's divide by 3. 3 divided by 3 gives me 1. All right. And 6 divided by 3 gives me... So I have negative 2, right? Because there's that negative right there. So now, how do we multiply fractions? We multiply fractions straight across. 1 times 1 is 1. Negative 2 times 7 gives you negative 14. And negative 14 over 1 can also be written as just negative 14 equals P. All right, that was question number one. Make sure you do show your work. Look how much work I showed. Make sure you show work as well. Let's move on to question number two. Ooh, why did I put it twice? All right, let's do question number two. Just give me a second. Let's erase this really quick. I got a better way. All right, so let's answer this question and let's see. First thing we want to do is see if there's anything that I can combine or move over. Remember, I have two sides. So it looks like, right, I have 2.1x over here. Then I have 1.3x over here. That means I can combine those two. So let's get rid of this first. Remember, we want to try to get rid of the addition or subtraction. We want to leave the variables on the side that they are. So let's get rid of that negative 4.6. What is the opposite of negative 4.6 or the re inverse? That would be the addition. So add of 4.6. So what is, don't forget to cross it off. Whatever you do on one side, make sure you do it to the other. So we are going to add 4.6 same sign right that's a, a positive 2.2 so let's add 2 plus 6 gives me 8 2 plus 4 gives me 6 and then let me rewrite my equation i now have 2.1 x plus 1.3 x equals 6.8 let's combine these two together this and this they are the same sign so we're just going to add so 1.3 so remember when we add decimals, we line up the decimals, right? 1 plus 3 is 4, 2 plus 1 is 3, so I have 3.4x equals 6.8. Now remember we do have, we just want to get this x by itself. We do have an invisible sign right here. Well. We know that's multiplication. So what is the opposite of multiplication? We know that that is division. So 3.4. Don't forget to cross it off. Whatever you do on one side, make sure you do it to the other. We have x equals. And we're going to divide by 3.4. So let's just show our work. So we have 6.8 divided by 3.4 if you forgot how to divide with decimals just know if you have a decimal on the outside we want to move it in so i moved it one space right so that means i have to move this one space right here i'm going to bring it up there's my decimal and let's see can 34 go into 6 no it cannot so it must go into 68 well how many times does 34 go into 68 well i know it goes in this there two times so 2 times 4 is 8, 2 times 3 is 6, we subtract that, we get 0. So we know that our answer over here is x is equal to 2. Alright, let's move on to question number 3. Again, same steps apply, just make sure we follow the rules of PEMDAS. Parentheses, exponents, multiplication, division, addition, and subtraction. Remember, we usually want to get rid of the addition or subtraction first. So I do see that I have an addition problem here. So let's do that one first. What is the opposite of adding 9? Well, we know the opposite is subtracting 9. So let's do that. Cross it off. Whatever you do on one side, make sure you do it to the other. We are subtracting 9. We also know that these are both negative. So if it's the same sign, we add. So 30 plus 9 will give me 39. You know, if we're talking about uh, 
negative number line so here is negative 30 and if we add another negative 9 it's going to the left so 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 we're at negative 39 Okay, let's rewrite the equation. We now have 3 parenthesis 5 minus 2 h and parenthesis equal sign. Now, this is where we start talking about into algebra. We learned this in 6th and 7th grade. This would be considered the distributive property. That means we're going to distribute. Uh, if you don't know what the distribu to distribute means, think of if I said, here's, here's a stack of papers. Would you please distribute this to the classroom? That means pass out. So we're going to pass out this 3 to everything inside of that parentheses. So I'm going to take this 3 and I'm going to do this. Uh, I honestly don't like calling it the distributed method. I learned to call it the rainbow uh, just because eventually you get to the point where you're going to draw so many of these arrows, it's going to look like a rainbow. And we also know that distributive means multiplication, or whenever you see rainbows, we're talking about multiplication. So let's do that. Let's do what is 3 times 5. That's going to give me 15. And then 3 times negative 2h, right? That's a positive times a negative, will give me negative 6h. Rewrite the problem equals negative 39. Now we just want to make sure we isolate the variable. Let's get that h by itself. Remember, we want to get rid of addition and subtraction first. I know that this is a positive 15. So what is the opposite of adding 15? That's going to be subtract 15. Whatever you do on one side, do it to the other. So we're going to cross that off. We're going to subtract 15. Okay. Well, we know that they are the same sign. So if they are the same sign, we have to what? Add. Okay. So let's add 9 plus 4 is... 14 carry the 1 3 plus 1 is 4 plus 1 is 5 so we have 54 we also keep the sign so that's going to be negative 54 drop down this equal sign let's bring that down we now have negative 6h equals negative 54 well we know we have an invisible operation right here so what is the opposite of multiplying by negative 6 that's going to be divide by negative 6 don't forget to cross it off. Whatever you do on one side, do it to the other. Let's divide by negative 6. Well, we know a negative divided by a negative gives us a positive. That's right. So we know our answer is positive. And 54 divided by 6 will give us 9. And then all you got to do is drop down the h. We know our answer for this problem is h equals 9. All right, let's move on to the next one. Looks like we got another one similar to the last one we just did a little bit trickier uh, just because if we don't pay attention you're gonna be like oh I gotta move this to the other side but that is wrong <laughs> don't don't do that uh, remember we want to try to combine the variables and leave the variables on the side that they are okay so it looks like there's nothing for me to do here because it does have a variable so that means I have to do some things over here now remember the last question we talked about this what does that mean well rainbow distributed property that means multiplication so what is 14 times x that's going to give me 14 x and then 14 times a that's not just three ladies and gentlemen that is negative three so what is 14 times negative three if we don't know let's show our work let's say three times four is 12 carry the one three times one is three plus one is 4 so it looks like we have negative 42 minus 22 X equals negative 18 okay now remember we want to keep the variables on the same side let's get rid of the addition or subtraction oops it looks like we have an addition a subtraction problem right here so let's get rid of that so what is the opposite of subtracting 42 that's going to be adding 42 cross that off Let's add 42. Well, are they same sign or different sign? They are different signs. If they are different signs, we have to subtract. So we have 42 minus 18. We can't take 8 from 2, so we got to borrow. Turns into 3. That turns into 12. 12 minus 8 is 4. And then 3 minus 1 is 2. So now we have 24. Let's ask ourselves, do we have more positives or do we have more negatives? 
well we have more positive because I know 42 is bigger than 18 so that's a positive 24 bring down the equal sign let's see what's left over we have minus 22 X and then I have 14 X okay so now let's combine these two together so they are different signs that is a positive 14 X if it is a positive and negative different signs we subtract so let's subtract we have 22 X minus 14 X well I can't take 4 from 2 so I gotta borrow and 12 minus 4 is 8 1 minus 1 is 0 just bring down the X so I now have 8x is equal to 24. All right, well, ladies and gentlemen, we know we have an invisible operation there. It's multiplication, and the opposite of multiplication is division. So let's divide by 8. I'm going to divide by 8. Whatever you do on one side, do it to the other. 24 divided by 8 is 3. Bring down your variable. We know that x is equal to 3. All right, let's move on to the next question. Looks like we got two more questions. Okay, so here we go. Again, please don't be afraid of this pi sign. Uh, it's just a symbol. They're trying to throw you off. But remember, which one is the variable? Is it a pi sign or is it the letter? It is the letter. So you might see symbols from now and then, specifically in geometry. But we want to make sure we keep the Q on this side, right? So the Q is going to stay on this side. We're not moving it over there. So we know we have some invisible operations. That's multiplication. So what is the opposite of multiplying by negative 2 pi? That will be dividing by negative 2 pi. And whatever you do on one side, make sure you do it to the other. So remember, we are dividing by negative 2 pi. And I know my pi's are going to cross. Nope, not yet. So we know that we are going to divide. So what is 6 divided by 2? I know that's 3. So we know that our answer is going to be, and a positive divided by negative is a negative. So that's negative 3 pi is equal to q. There you go. Let's move on to the last one. Let's throw some geometry in here. So first things first, we need to understand that uh, every triangle is equal to 180 degrees no matter any way it looks acute obtuse uh, right angle all of the degrees are going to add up to 180 if it is a regular triangle so if we know that we also know that the word is means equals so it looks like something is going to equal 180 degrees and what that something is is all three of these added together so let's just add them all together so I have 44 right plus 3x plus x plus 20 inside parentheses okay so now let's see can we solve um, anything so far 44 stays the same 3x is gonna stay the same and I'm not allowed to add these together it's not 20x because this does not have a variable if I had a variable, then I would be able to add it. But because it does not, it stays the same. So basically, I have this now. I have 44 plus 3x plus x plus 20 equals 180. Now, is there anything that I can add together? Well, I know that 20 and 44 can go together. And I also know that 3x and x can go together. So let's add those two together. That's going to give me 4x. And then 20 plus 44 is going to give me 64 is equal to 180. And we should be familiar with this. It's starting to look very close. Let's get rid of this addition by doing its inverse. So the opposite of adding 64 is subtracting 64. Whatever you do on one side, make sure you do it to the other. So we're going to subtract 64, subtract 64. Let's see. i got to borrow. That turns into 7. This is 10. 10 minus 4 is 6. 7 minus 6 is 1. And then just drop the 1. So it's 116. So now I have 4x is equal to 116. We're not done yet. We know that we have an invisible operation there. So what is the opposite of multiplying by 4? That is dividing by 4. Whatever you do on one side, make sure you do it to the other. So let's divide by 4. 
please show your work do not use a calculator so we have one one six divided by four does four go into one nope does four go into eleven yes it does it goes in there two times two times four is eight eleven minus eight is three bring down the six how many times does four go into thirty six that is nine times nine times four is thirty six thirty six minus thirty six is zero so it looks like our answer for this problem is x equals 29. Now again, we're not done yet. We know that x is equal to 29. Let's look back at the question. Notice that we have 3x and then x plus 20. So what they are asking you to find out is what is the value of each angle? Well, we know that this one's 44. We know x is equal to 29. So all we got to do is 3 parentheses 29. Well, what operation is it when we have a number next to parentheses? Well, that's going to be multiplication. So what is 3 times 29? Let's see. Now, you can try and do this in your head, or you can write it down. Uh, in my head, I thought 30 times 3. It's easier to do. I know that's 90, but then we just have to subtract 1 for each. I know the answer is 87, but let's multiply. 3 times 9 is 27. Carry the 2. 3 times 2 is 6 plus 2 is 8. So we know that this one over here is 87. And last but not least, we just need to do 29 plus 20, and that should give us 49. If you add all three of those together, it should get you 180 degrees. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that was lesson 1.2. See you all tomorrow.